Hello, my name is Matthew, and I'm an engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. This video is a condensed version of a topic discussed in a recent webinar of ours. The topic is on 3D scanning with efficiency, how we can balance the quality of our final mesh with the processing speed and file size. Specifically, we will use RTEC and Creaform scanners as examples, but many of these tips and tricks can be applied to most other scanners out there. For starters, let's discuss what mesh resolution is. Resolution of a mesh is the amount of detail you can see in the mesh itself. By increasing resolution, we can have smaller features become visible and with better definition. Increasing point density of the raw data, aka the point cloud, helps increase the resolution of a mesh, so it has more data to work with. You can also process a point cloud at several levels of resolution. It isn't a one-time process. On the right, we have two examples of a mesh. The one on the left is a lower resolution than the one on the right. With the increased resolution, we can see the vents and bolts much easier since our triangle size of the mesh is smaller, allowing for smaller feature definition. The shape of the mesh, however, is the same. We can still see the handle and the cylinders that hold the drill heads. The graphs at the bottom also show how we can add more point data to our data set or decrease the edge size of our squares to add definition to our features. This is what increasing resolution of a final mesh also does. All features are shown and defined based on the resolution of the mesh and raw data used to generate it. Accuracy isn't affected as much as feature definitions would be, but having poor resolution in a mesh does make it harder to inspect and measure from. Lower point density data sets that are turned into a mesh oftentimes have noisy areas with outliers and rough surfaces. As we increase the density of the mesh and remove outliers, the software has an easier time triangulating between those points to create an accurate mesh. On this slide, we have three examples showing different point clouds processed at the same resolution. The gray mesh on the left side was a lower point density data set that didn't have any outlier removal will run on it. The green has a higher quality point cloud. We can see that the mesh becomes cleaner and easier to measure from as our point cloud density has increased and the outliers have been removed. The blue on the right has the highest density of point cloud and the lowest noise within it. For accuracy, having a low resolution in your mesh doesn't necessarily affect the positions of your features. Accuracy is based on how well the scanner can match the data points to the real world position and maintain it over large distances. You can process a mesh at lower resolution and still have high levels of accuracy for positions. You can also take a high resolution mesh and reduce the polygon count without affecting the accuracy. In the example below, we have a mesh with millions of triangles on the right and it's been reduced by about 80% of the total polygon count. In the reduced version, the flat faces have much larger triangles, but areas with high curvature are still defined and the positions of the features are all the same. The number of triangles in a mesh is directly related to the final file size of that mesh. More triangles in a mesh means it has more resources that are needed to load it because of that graphical data. This is why even increasing the resolution of a mesh by 0.1 millimeter can significantly change the file size. If you're looking for overall position of a feature versus definition in it, processing a mesh at a lower resolution or reducing the total polygon count can significantly reduce the file size of a mesh, making it easier to load into other programs. So how can we improve our processes with Artec scanners? For starters, Artec has HD data available for the Leo and Ava. HD, or high definition data, is a scan that is made and has an AI-driven algorithm run on it to identify features and edges. HD data can be captured along with standard scan data and be processed automatically after the scan is done or at a later time. HD data can have less frames within it, but the data within those HD scans is significantly better than the standard definition one. For every one HD frame, it's about the same as five standard definition ones, since the data is much denser and cleaner within that scan. The increased quality in the raw data also makes it easier to improve on the meshing, the feature definition and accuracy of our scans. Now a big benefit of the HD data is how we can use it to add high definition of data in areas of interest without needing to rescan anything. HD data takes longer to process due to its higher point density. We can process the scan in two parts, the standard data and the bulk of the project and HD in the areas we want well defined. This can quickly be done by simply erasing the data and the HD data around the area of interest, so only the spot we want in high quality remains, and the inverse for the standard definition data scan. We can cut back on the total processing times that would have been needed if we processed the entire thing in HD mode, since we only have a small section being processed in that higher definition versus the entire thing. When we export these two meshes, they can be merged together, 
Combining the low and high resolution meshes, we can easily improve the quality of data in select areas while maintaining our file size and processing times to be relatively small. The key is to ensure that you have the area of interest well defined by higher quality scanners and the point density within that area. Most meshing softwares have a way to process and align two different mesh files together, allowing you to ensure that their positions are accurate before exporting and merging the scans together. Not only can we combine data with the increase of quality of select areas, but we can also use it to help with positioning data sets in the real world. In the example here, we are using the Arctic Ray, a LiDAR scanner, which has the ability to scan large objects from far away quickly, with the Arctic Space Spider, a small view, but highly accurate of a scanner used to scan areas of interest. Scanning the back of the plane with the spider would have been nearly impossible, but the ray can quickly scan this and still have that high level of accuracy, but use a lower resolution than the spider. If we need all of the bolts, openings, and mounting features to be accurately positioned to one another for inspection, we combine the ray's high level of accuracy across large spaces with the space spider's high resolution to have a final mesh that has the mounting features well defined and in the real world positions. Combining data from different quality scanners can also significantly add more point density to areas that may have been lacking before. The high resolution small view scanners often capture millions of more points than the wider view scanners. This allows them to get into pockets of an object or spaces that may be harder to reach and add more data to the point cloud. By using just the AVA, we can see that the underside of the dials on this dashboard were not fully scanned due to the space being too tight to properly position the scanner. The Space Spider, however, can scan this area easily, so we add the Space Spider data to the AVA point cloud and merge them together during the meshing process. Now, our final mesh is complete and has all the dials fully defined. For Creoform scanners, most of the principles we've been talking about do still carry over. Creeform scanners, however, offer some possibilities over Arctic scanners for reducing processing times and improving that final mesh quality. Targets allow us to capture positional data without needing to scan point data at the same time. This makes scanning larger objects easier and we can align dense point cloud data much easier than we would if we had to do it by feature definitions. The multi-resolution tool within VX Elements can change the resolution of our final mesh in specific areas. This can be useful to reduce the polygon count of a mesh except for the select areas we want to stay increased or decrease the resolution of simple surfaces on that final mesh. Targets are used with the Creoform scanners, especially the HandyScan series, to maintain positionings. Instead of having to capture the data and targets at the same time, we can instead scan all of our targets first, then capture the raw data after. If you have a large object and only need to know where two features are relative to one another, scanning all the data between isn't really necessary. By capturing the targets first, we can reduce the amount of computer resources that are being used to generate the graphical data and reduce the processing times. Here, we've captured the targets between two outlets on a large table. If we were to capture the point data and targets at the same time, we're using about 25% of our computer resources, meaning the file size is larger and has more data within the project, so it will take longer to process. By scanning the targets first, we could scan the outlets separately, but still have accurate positions between the two. Now, we're only using 15% of our computer resources, which means that it's going to be much easier to process and our file size is smaller in the end. The multi-res tool only affects the final mesh, not the point density. Typically, a mesh will be processed entirely in a single resolution. By using the multi-res tool, we can just highlight the areas of our mesh we want to increase the resolution without having to reprocess the entire mesh. This is dependent on the amount of points within the raw data, however. If you increase a mesh in an area that has low point density, it will appear rougher, similar to how we were showing earlier in this video with the three mesh examples. By adding additional scans to the final mesh, we can increase the density of points within that area, allowing us to process the lettering or patterns at a higher resolution, since we have more data to sparse between. Decreasing the resolution of the mesh in areas with simple surfaces can reduce the polygon count by a large amount. These areas oftentimes have triangles that can be combined into a single one, since it just needs to represent a flat face. This doesn't require increasing the point density of a mesh to function properly, since we are actually filtering more data in order to generate a lower resolution mesh. In this example, we reduce the polygon count in all areas except for our connections cutting the polygon count by, oh, by more than half. Areas not affected by the decreased resolution appear the same, and the areas that were decreased since they were so simple in their geometry do not look significantly different. Bolts, however, that may have been in these decreased areas do keep their exact positioning, but are now a little harder to define since their edges are blurred together. So to recap some of these fundamentals we've been talking about in this video, the quality of the point data relates to how the final mesh will be. If you have sparse points or low quality data, 
or noise, the final mesh will be affected. We can increase the resolution of our final mesh by adding more scan data or higher density point cloud to our raw data set, since it will have more data to be able to parse between and create higher definition features. Accuracy isn't fully related to resolution, but having a higher resolution mesh can see features easier and make it easier to model and measure from. File size is directly related to the polygon count. By decreasing the polygon count or mesh resolution, we can reduce the final mesh file size. If you do process a mesh at a higher resolution, you can reduce the polygon count by using a simplification tool. It's sometimes easier to start with a higher resolution mesh and then reduce the polygon count to a lower amount, allowing you to keep higher definition in curved areas. The processing time of the mesh is directly related to the final resolution and point data within the scans. If you process a high point density cloud or multiple scans into a single mesh, it will take longer. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're interested in learning more, please check out our full webinar on this topic, or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos on 3D scanners, printers, or engineering software. <laughs>